You're coming too. What started as a dream is now our reality. Six years ago, we poured her ballast, raised every frame, cut every plank, and named her Red Aviva. Ready for life back on the ocean, this year we're determined yeah. to set sail. Did you look at that? I'd say that's the making of a fine cruising vessel. <laughs> We're Salt and Tar, and this is our life. We're happy to share, and thanks for joining us. All right, we're gonna crush some rigging today. We're gonna start with the starboard side, because obviously that's the easy side, since that's the side we have a dock. Gare's deciding to do it really simple. The dead ice took a while on the main, so we're just gonna do rope lashings for the mizzen. Well, I wanna do it kind of, I was kind of inspired by the old uh, Colin Archer boats, the old rescue boats. They're really sexy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a gas catch rig just like us. And uh, they've got the full dead eyes on the main mast, which we have. And then on the mizzen mast, they just have uh, like rope lashings and uh, it looks pretty cool and it's super simple, super easy. So that's that was my inspiration. So that's what I'm gonna do with this. And we can just get it all done today and move on with our lives and go sit. Yeah. Yeah. Like everything, the first one's always gonna take the longest because we just have to decide what we want as far as you know our heights. All right, we're gonna kick on some music. So I'm gonna edit in some music for you guys and let's rig the mizzen. passes and splice. What you thinking now move to the port side or yeah we need to do the final tighten up on those chain plates on the port side okay and then do, yeah do the same thing sweet start on the top one top one ah 
That's pretty tight. Okay, let's go down. If we're good to make the uh, shrouds and then might just do one more round of tightening before we cinch everything up for good. Now that all four shrouds are cut and crimped, we move on to the three strand line for the lashings. A little refresher on eye splicing and Garrett splices the fixed end to the shackle on the chain plate. I might end up, when I actually do it, mm -hmm. I might end up seizing the tail up here and doing the wrap like up here. So you're gonna start with just making the eye and cutting for all of them? Mm -hmm. And then figure out exactly how you wanna finish? Um, well, I might go ahead and take this back off and then just measure, make sure it should be about the same lengths for all of them, maybe. Um, well, this is plenty long, so I'll probably just cut three more to the same length and then do the three splices and then I'll be ready to basically put them all on. Mm -hmm. Nice. After cutting all four lengths of line, Garrett splices the eye in the end of each one. We're gonna get the other forward one in, and then start looking at the rake. And we're gonna have to lower the bow for it, tension it. Okay. And then we're gonna have to slowly start pulling the mast where we want it. The rake is the angle of the mast, so before we fully tension the shrouds, we match the mizzen's rake to the main. I wish I could get a better look side on so I could see where the rake is. Yeah. Gonna have to walk over that end and see what I can see. <laughs> Garrett's 
poor fingers are wrecked after rigging Red Aviva. No one can say traditional boats are easy, but they sure are simply beautiful. Garrett sweats each pass of line to tension the rig. All the while, a come along helps pull and hold the shroud tight. Alternating starboard aft, port forward, and so around we go, taking up on one, checking the other, taking up some more on another, until the rig looks and feels right. And this is just the initial tensioning. One more round at the dock, then again during sea trials, until satisfied. Maybe this is why people say wooden boats have soul, because you've poured so much of yours in. It's a bond hard to describe. Every shackle gets a hefty amount of grease and will be properly wire seized when complete. And all of our galvanized wire and three strand line will be properly blackened. Garrett started, he's got the first one already done. And then he's going to do the main gaff and boom. And they'll, of course, be a little bit longer. Main mast is a little bit bigger. And then he's also going to do the leathering on the inside. And while he's kind of working on that, I'm gonna put the next coat on the cabin top. <laughs> and maybe get around to scrubbing the rest of the deck so that way I can get one uniform coat now that the side decks are all done. What, you excited about it? Today's super nice, so maybe if I get this scrubbing done uh, maybe that'll be the last thing. Maybe we'll tag team rolling on some teak oil and that'll probably, will that be like the last coat you think? Until, until next year. Till next year. And we're just using teak oil cause we just want it to soak into the wood. We don't actually need it to. We don't want it to be glossy. Yeah, we don't want it to be glossy that or slippery. slippery, but everything else gets boat soup. And right now, all of the spars, the booms and the gaffs just have teak oil on them just to, you know, protect it while we're still working on them. And then when everything's done, because they're also not cut to length yet, none of the hardware is there yet. So a good amount of that we'll have to wait till we get the sales, right? But a yeah. fair amount we can... We can do a lot of it, but there's still a good amount. Like, I'm going to wait to cut them down to final length and then and then to uh, put like the reefing combs in and a lot of the hardware and stuff like that. So there's a fair amount that we'll have to wait till the sails are done to do. Fun day in the sun on the boat. <laughs> <laughs>
and then run the uh, main For the gap? Mm -hmm. Oh, it looks so good. Just that little bit of teak oil on there already. So nice not having that canvas cover on here anymore. This is gonna be just an eye bolt to take the throat halyard and probably the head of the uh, mainsail. I'm gonna put a little eye nut on the bottom of it. So just whoop. We could only find um, eye bolts that were way longer than we need at the store. So we just got the long ones and cut them down. I didn't wanna buy it. to hide the I didn't price wanna tag buy for me? it in stain. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't wanna buy it in stainless. I wanted to get it in galvanized, but they only had stainless, so. How much was it? 25 bucks a piece. Ooh. Good thing we only need two. Appreciate your work and all your stuff on this video. Stop it. Say wow, hi. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> so I appreciate all your work and stuff on this video. Hey, hey, quiet, bud. It's sort of nice to see stuff that actually people are building and being resourceful. So this is a buddy of mine. I wish you the best. <laughs> Thanks, Thank you. Guys. What year was she built? Uh, we, we started in 2015. Yeah, we laid the keel in 2015. I mean, it's brand new. It's not an older boat. No, yeah. we built her no. from scratch. No way. She's <laughs> only six. So, so do you follow a plan? Are you following somebody's plan? Or do you make up your... I mean, yeah, you, a, naval, a naval architect named George Bueller. Yeah. Um, so I got in contact with him and uh, he drew us up a set of uh, blueprints and I told him what we were looking for and I, I just liked his whole design philosophy in, in general. Um, and so yeah, I was talking to him and he, uh, he drew us a set of plans and sent it out to us and then we had friends that had property out in Washington so they let us set up, a, you know, build a, a big, uh, you know, shed, tent shed and, and build the boat. <laughs> Did you sell it down here or haul it down? Uh, we put it on a truck and brought oh. it here because um, it was just the hull and the deck and the cabin uh, oh, when yeah. we transported her. Uh -huh. So we built her to that point. It was brutal. We were, were kicking her butt. <laughs> yeah, we were living outside trying to build this thing and being super broke at the same time. So, uh, huh. so we trucked it here. We put it in the yard here and we were in the yard for another two years. And uh, then we launched it and we've been slowly finishing everything while she's in the water. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Are you going to go around the world or what? Uh, right I was, now our plans... Where's your first destination? Mexico. South. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we we yeah. sailed to Mexico in 2010 and we've been wanting to sail back ever since. Boat, yeah. yeah oh, on our first boat that we got together. Um, and yeah, Mexico and then... Down, down South America maybe? Just wherever yeah. we feel like when we feel like it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, after lose lifestyle. track of some time okay, in Mexico. I'm, I'm starting to get jealous now. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things Garrett and I fantasized about while we were building in the Pacific Northwest was the day someone asked how old she was. And we'd shock them when we'd say, we started in 2015, not 1915. Garrett would say his dream was to build a boat that wouldn't look out of place in the 1800s. Today, a dream's come true. Next dream is to sail her someplace tropical. Our sails are a couple months out, thanks to m &H Bartles and all of you who donated to help make this possible. Now let's run our first halyard. We're gonna need those when the sails arrive. Gonna make the uh, main halyard, the real throat halyard. <laughs> <laughs> Not an old uh, anchor road <laughs> that was shackled to another old anchor road. <laughs> wow. And 
I love having rounds. <laughs> Look at this dog. <laughs> what are you doing, big boy? <laughs> so, what are the steps here? I'm just gonna spice it around this. Okay. Fancy. Nice. So that's the bitter end. Yeah. And then, how? long do you want the tail to be? Um, just so there's a good amount down here. Um, but it doesn't need to be crazy long. Cause this is as, I mean, way lower than it will ever be, right? Yeah. So Garrett finished the leathering on both the mizzen gaff and the mizzen boom. Wow. So while he was doing that, I got the inside and outside again. Nice hefty coat of soup there on the rudder cheeks. And then I got the inside of the starboard side. I still have the inside here on the transom and the rub rail on the outside of the port side. But that'll be another day starting to drop in temperature again and tomorrow if I'm lucky enough with the weather I'll get the last couple steps that Michael did on the Port Ratlins and maybe re-soup the whole main mast and get Garrett's help to lower down the bowsprit and do that. Oh God. See how Swab's laying right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're cool, Swab.